Good morning, everybody. As we come to the 15th day of Shvat, Shuba Shvat, the Rosh Hashanah for trees. So we learn first the Chumash of the day which starts on chapter 15 of the book of Exodus, verse number 27, we are holding in the book of Mishalach. Yesterday we read about the going, we learned about the going out, the crossing of the sea. And now the Jewish people traveled from the, from the Red Sea by Yevaya Lima, and they came to Elim. And with there, there were 12 water fountains in this mine. The Shivan Tamarim and 70 palm trees, and they encamped there on the water. So now she says they correspond to the 12 tribes that they're able to prepare for them over there 12, 12, uh, 12 fountains of water and 70 uh, Tamarim, 70 uh, date palms, is for the uh, 70s Canaan, show them how much he beloved them the elders of the Jewish nation. Verse 16. I mean, chapter 16, verse 1. By Yisum Elim, and they traveled from Elim, by Yahweh called Asim, and saw Midbar Sin. The Jewish people traveled from Elim, and they came to the desert of Sin. Asher ben Elim, and ben Sinai, which sits between Elim and Sinai. Bachamisha Asim, Lachedesh Hasheni, they all came to the 15th day of the second month, which is here, interesting because today is the 15th day of Shvat, which is the 11th month. This was the uh, the second, the second month, the month of the month of Iyar. After Lutesa uh, Me'erit uh, Mitzrayim from going out of Egypt. The Rashi says the day of this encampment is stated because on that day, the cakes that they have taken out of Egypt was depleted. And they needed man. That's when it started, the man. We learn from this, that they ate the remaining dough, or what was remaining, the matzah, 61 meals. And the man fell for them on the 16th of year, which is actually tomorrow. So today, not on tomorrow, the 15th of year, it ended, today's the 15th of Shvat, and on the 16th of year, the man started to fall, which was Sunday, as appears in the tractate of Shabbos, it tells you exactly which day of the month, and even the day of the week. Verse number two, the entire community, so they were, they were running out of food, right? They ran out of food. So the Jewish people complained, no food. Amesha Amidbana came to complain to him. Ah, she says, because the bread they've taken out of Egypt, that's it, it was done. Verse number three. If we would only die by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt. We sat in the pots of meat. We ate bread our fill. You took us out to a desert to starve the entire congregation to death. So now she says, if we were only died, that we would have died, but it's not a noun, my may say no, our death, but like she was saying that we that we do, that we encamp, that we return, that we die, literally. We stand to who would who would you grant that we would die? If only would have we would have died, it would have been a better death. Because the death of starvation is the worst death. So it would have been better to die in Egypt 
at least be have food in our mouths. Verse 4. So God said, Behold, I'm going to rain down bread from heaven. What's your problem? And the Jewish people go out and they will, they will eat. They'll go out and collect their food day by day. This is all a test to see if you'll follow. So she the amount of food you eat for that day that will fall that day. And you cannot collect today for tomorrow. Lamana says, I do this so I want to test you if you're following my teachings. They will say, though to give me the money, I will test you. Wherever they will keep the commandments is contingent upon it. And that they did not leave any of it over, as some of the Jews did do that. And they will not go on the Shabbos to gather. And some of the Jews did that too. Verse number five. Hey, Abiyah Mashishi will be on the sixth day. Vichinesh Yavi. I'm going on the sixth day on Friday. I'll prepare what they will bring. Vaya Mishnah. It'll be a double. Ashayikta Yemen. They'll have Friday. They'll have double. That's why it's mentioned that on Friday night, the two chalas are called Lechem Mishnah. Double bread. Symbolic to what happened in the desert. That on Friday they got double bread. Why did he need double bread for the, for Friday and for Shabbos? So now she says Mishnah double of what they were accustomed to gather each day on the rest of the days of the week. I believe that the meaning of this uh, that what they will bring it is will be double. It is as if is as if that they bring it the mana by measuring it. They will find a double of what they gathered and measure each day. This was a miraculous thing in general, that everybody collected every day exactly what they needed to eat. Didn't make a difference how much time they collected or how much time they didn't collect. They exactly got what they needed. And so too on Friday, whatever they collected automatically came double. Didn't make a difference how much little or how much more they collected always became double on Friday. The gathering was found to be doubled portion of bread. That is the meaning of, therefore, on the sixth day, he will give you bread of two days. He give, who's going to give you? David's going to give you that automatically you're going to have double. He gives you blessings. In the house will, will fill the omer of twice of two days of bread. The general teaching in Chassid is that the general panasa, man, is the concept of panasa, a living from heaven, that a Jew believes it comes from heaven. Whatever the Abishta wants to give you, that's what you're going to have. Doesn't make a difference. You're going to work 24 hours a day, or you're going to work 12 hours a day, or you're going to do this or that. Whatever God wants to give you, that's what you're going to have. And uh, that's what it's going to be. And nothing can change the fact. So that's a, every Rosh Hashanah, for example, decides how much money you're going to make. You have to do, you, you have to, a person has to put in his work. Like the Jews had to go out and collect the man. They couldn't just sit in the house and sleep and the man's going to fall through the chimney. It's not going to happen that way. You have to go out and collect. But what you, what you deserve is what you're going to collect. Not more, not less. If the Abishu wants to give you double, then you'll have double automatically, even though you're going to collect the same way as, that, as yesterday. Very important teaching in the Torah. Verse number six. So Moses and Aaron said to the children of Israel, Erev, today in the evening, today you'll see, my friends, you're going to realize how the Abish loves you. Since the people of Israel said to Moses, for you have brought us out, you brought, they're blaming on Moshe and Aaron, you brought us out, they don't want to, they don't want to direct the complaints to God. They pointed, oh, you're the ones who took us out to die in the desert. You shall know that, that, not, that we are not the one who brought you out of, out of, the, out of Egypt. But the Amish to brought you out of Egypt. And when God brings you out of Egypt, he'll make sure you have bread. What do you want? We're not, we didn't bring you out of Egypt. If we would have brought you out of Egypt, you complain to us, where's the bread, where's the food? But the Amish, what do you think? That if God brought you out of Egypt in the desert, you're going to die in the desert. You'll see that 
ye will have enough food. Verse number seven. Break your knees and create a vaya in the morning. You'll see the glory of God. <clears throat> as he has heard your complaints. And who are we? What's our significance? Kisolino Aleino, that you are complaining upon us. So now she says, in the morning you will see this was not stated in reference to the, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. But this is what Moses said to them. In the evening you shall know that he has ability to grant your desire. And he will give you meat. But he will not give it to you with a smiling countenance. Because you requested it in an appropriate way. And with a full stomach. As for bread, which you request out of necessity, which you're asking today, however, when it comes down in the morning, you'll see the glory, the radiance, and the contents of God. For he will bring it down to you lovingly in the morning. When there's time to prepare it, and when to do over it, and to do under it, as it was lying in a box. So God said over here, God says, because the Jewish people asked not only for bread, over here they were asking for bread, they also asked for meat. And another time later, they asked for meat. So over here, God said, I'm gonna bring down the towel, I'm gonna bring down the, 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 the man every morning, like in a like in a box. And what does that mean? That the morning the towel, the dew came down blanketed the desert, the towel came down, and then the dew came down on top of it. So the, 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 the towel, the man was like in a box, it's like in a beautiful box, so to say, with a sandwich, well protected, hydrated, beautiful. Imagine, imagine living in the, imagine, wow. You complaint were against God. What is our importance that you're complaining on us? That's to make everyone complain against us, your sons, your wives, your daughters, the mix of multitude. So Tolino is in the sense you make do something, you're forcing, you're, you're creating this whole you know this whole thing you're making it viral this complaint you're creating a a whole movement what are you creating this whole movement of complaint not only you're complaining now your wives are complaining and their children are complaining everybody's complaining that's the power of you know expression it takes 10 to build it takes one to destroy one person starts to complain next person starts to murmur etc cetera, etc cetera. Verse number eight. When the Lord gives you in the evening meat to eat and bread in the morning, to be satisfied. Because God heard your complaints. Which you are complaining about him. Again, why are you complaining on us? I know you're pointing fingers at me, but the complaint is not to me. But on God. So that's just basal echo, but not to be satiated. The Torah here teaches us a rule of behavior. We should not eat meat to satiate yourself. What did he see? What is the reason that he have to bring down bread in the morning and meat in the evening? Because they requested bread appropriately. So it's, it's impossible for a person to get along without bread. But they requested meat inappropriately. Because there are many animals, they had many animals, and furthermore, it's possible for them to get al along without meat. You don't need meat. Therefore, he gave it to them at a time when it would be burden to them to prepare, and an inappropriate time, which is at night. Very powerful lesson. So usually, a person eats meat because he wants to enjoy. That's why it says actually, "Ain't simcha There's no joy without meat. But you don't have to always eat meat. We don't have to eat meat. That's why there were great sages who only would eat meat Friday night to Friday night, that they should eat it for the mitzvah. But bread is something that gives needs a person needs to have it for the staple of his life. Asha'atim alim alav, which you are making people to complain against him, you are making others to hear your complaints. So it's not only, not only important to you that you're complaining, 
but you're making sure others hear you complain so they can start thinking about complaining too. Verse number nine. Misery loves company. And Moses said to Aaron, Emel called Yisrael, tell the Jewish community, Hashem, come before God. Because God has heard your complaint. Kirvu, that she says, come to the place where the, la- the cloud descended. And when, the, when Aaron was speaking to the community, they turned their faces to the deserts. The glory of God appeared in the cloud. Wow. Many, many different commentators on this Pasuk alone. What does it mean? The glory of God revealed itself in the cloud. But there's no rash in it, so we will end the Chumash of the day. And now we go to the Tanya of the day. Alter Rebbe is explaining the way Chasidut looks at a mitzvah and the way Chasidut looks at God forbid a sin. It's not about the punishment. It's about the connection and disconnection. It's about revealed and what's hidden. When a person does a mitzvah, he reveals godliness. He reveals the purpose of why God created the world. When he does a sin, he hides the purpose. He hides the godliness of the will. He cannot disconnect God from God, but he hides it. So that's why now the Alter Rebbe continues. Therefore, our sages say there's a verse in the Torah. The Torah says, if a man's wife turns aside, when there's God forbid infidelity in the in the fa- in a marriage, God forbid. We know that this that the, the that the Torah and Shlomo Melech Hashir Hashirim compares the relationship between man and God to the relationship of a man and woman, a relationship in general. It's a very deep relationship. Uh, uh, it's different than any other relationship with a, a, a husband and wife in comparison to any other relationships you have in the world. Of course, it's a very intimate relationship, a very special relationship. So Torah says, God forbid this, God forbid infidelity in a, in a person's marriage. The Torah calls infidelity with the word tishta. Tishta means stupidity, folly. Shtus. Ain, and the Gemara says, from here we learn from this relationship between a husband and a wife, God forbid infidelity. With Torah over here in this word, this verse calls it shtus, stupidity. The Gemara says, Ain Adam Eva Veda, a person doesn't do a sin unless it's a moment of insanity. Stupidity. That's the way the Gemara learns this Pasuk for it. Even an adulterous woman with a frivolous nature could have controlled her passion. Right? If you have a relationship that's having an, an affair, that's very stupid. Everybody would agree that it's stupid. That means that people are in a little way, this marriage, this relationship is out of control, which is very sad and very stupid. But Everybody, you can't say, oh, you know what? I couldn't control myself. I had to, in this marriage, play around and bring another entity in this marriage. Everybody would say, that's stupid. Go out, get divorced, try to fix the marriage. But to to do such a thing, bring something else in the marriage is stupid. But everybody will say, I can't control myself. I just couldn't control, too passionate. That's stupid. Could have controlled her passion. Drive were not for a spirit of folly, stupidity. She thought, or he thought, or both of them thought that they can play around. They basically can play the game. And that's why they did this act. So it's stupid because Nichtos by Ruachstos, a spirit of folly, stupidity comes. What happens when a, stu- when, a, when, a, when a spirit of stupidity comes? What happens? 
Hamachasa or master, this stupidity, this folly, covers over, hides the truth. That's what it does. So the person talks himself in that he won't get caught, that he nobody will know, and it's gonna, you know, and we'll come up with all these things. I'm unhappy. I'm this. I'm that. Da, 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 da. And it's all stupid. It's all covering over the truth, the truth of the breakage of this marriage, the truth of ultimately it's going to be revealed, the truth of the embarrassment that I'm going to have, etc., etc., etc. So this hides. That's when a person does a sin. What happens? He's just covering over his truth. That's the comparison to every sin that I do. That's, that's what's really happening. You know, you know we, 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 every person hopes he's never going to get caught between him and God, or God is not worried, or God is not looking. And we do the sin. But what we're doing really is not that we're doing something against God. We're covering over our own truth. That's what we're really doing. That's the worst part of the sin. Is the covering over of my godly soul. The dafka of because our godly soul, we all know, wants to connect with the faith of God. We want a relationship. Just like in a relationship in a marriage. We want the relationship. That's how we got married. We want the relationship. But we talk ourselves in that we can play with the relationship. We talk ourselves in that we can play with the relationship with God. Nobody wants to disconnect from the oneness of God. And therefore, a person is ready to give up his soul, right? Every Jew is ready to give up his life for God. I feel like this now, Nobody would do a sin of idol worship. No Jew would do that. Not only wouldn't he worship it, but I feel even to like fake it, that I'm just going to bow down to it. I'm not going to think about it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to worship the idol because I like it. Oh, I need to do this right now, whatever. Make it happy. It's good for business. I'm going to bow down, but I'm not really going to have. But you won't do that. He's going to give up his life. If you think about that, that a person can control his temptation for adultery. To control yourself in adultery is worse, is easier seemingly than control yourself from, from bowing down to an idol. So why do people can't control themselves for adultery? But when it comes to give up the life for God, they're ready to give up the life for God. It doesn't make sense. If you're ready to give up your life for God, not to bow down to an idol. So what's so difficult to give up, to control yourself for a simple thing, for not doing a stupid thing? Hashem Mirishmerenu, may God protect us. So what did happen? Why? Because that's the stupidity. That's why the Torah says it's a moment of insanity. A sin is a moment of insanity. If you're ready to give up your life, not to bat out to an idol, you should be, this is not giving up your life. This is just giving up your timer. It's giving up your desire. It's giving up your passion. What's what? I'm ready to give up my life. I shouldn't be ready to give up a passion. It doesn't make sense. It's totally stupid. And that's what the Gemara says. Ishki sister, sister. That it, I'll give you a simple analogy. Which today is not a joke because today you look up statistics, 60% of people are having uh, 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 prohibited affairs in their lives. Why? Because that's a moment of insanity. Insanity. It's a moment of stupidity. And that's, so we have the sanity clause, ins insanity clause, insanity clause. We have a sanity clause when it comes to Jewish law. <laughs> the distinction she makes, well, we she or he makes between the prohibition, the, 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 the simple difference that of that person, there's the insanity that that person, the stupidity that he makes, that a person makes a difference between adultery and idolatry. It's a simply a spirit of folly sent from Klippa. So the clipper, the covering that he has already, is making these distinctions. Telling him, oh, you know what? Oh, you don't, I don't understand. You will not do.
do idolatry. But adultery you can do. That's a moment that's stupid. And we let them, we, and, and we, as human beings, allow this insanity to come part of our lives. And we become more and more insane. The more clippers we, be, we bring into our lives, the more stupid we become. But it's all stupidity. Because we know it ourselves that it's stupid. We're not fooling ourselves. We're not fooling others. We're not fooling ourselves. Because we're covering over the Ruach to the clip of the The spirit of Foley envelops the divine soul only up to, but not including the faculty of Chachma, which is explained in chapter 18. It represents the power of faith. That's why we will go to stupidity until it pushes our Emunah Hashem. Until you push a Jew to the wall. So a Jew will give up every mitzvah. He won't do any mitzvah. But tell him he's not a Jew. Boom. You've started a war. Because that's the Chachmah. We learned in the beginning of Tanya. Now, chapter 18 of Tanya. Because that's when you touch the Chachmah. The wisdom of the Jew. Where is there. As we learned. Is the Mesilas Nefesh of the Jew. There is where the Jew goes above. Above his understanding. So your, my stupidity can reach even up to my understanding. That's how high it can go. It can go from all my emotions until my bina. The second it reaches the chachma, that's when the chachma quells it. The chachma, the wisdom says, forget it. Enough is enough. Because over there you touch my soul. And over there you touch my mesira stefesh. You you bring about you reveal my 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 my, my self sacrifice, and that's what happens. So we can push a Jew, we can push a Jew, we can push a Jew, or better say, a Jew can push himself, can push himself, can push himself until it comes to the red line. Why? Because the light of God, which is in the level of chachma, can as mentioned above. So therefore, the Jew talks himself in to this. He talks himself into this insanity. But if you look in the mirror and you want to know the truth, and you, we all want to know the truth, but if you want to know the truth, and if a Jew looks into himself, he looks at himself, and he wants to know the truth, I feel I made a color. It doesn't make a difference. The big ones or even the smallest sin that I can do. The moment I do the sin, what I think is a simple sin, I talk Lashon Hara, I have an evil thought, I have now gone against the will of my Kodesh Baruch. And at this moment, at this moment, I've cut, I, I, I cut myself from the unity. I still am here, because God never cuts himself off from me, but I cut myself off from him. At this moment, with my mouth, whether it's through my thought, whether it's through my speech, again, it's a separation of this relationship. Just like a relationship between a husband and wife, it's a continuous concept, 24-7. Marriage is 24-7. And I shouldn't have a breakage in action, and neither in speech, and even in thought. I should not come to my mind or thought of uh, in, in, in any aspect of a breakage in this relationship. And if I do, at that moment, I'm thinking about something else or somebody else. I have now disconnected. And therefore, realize, my friend, as Alter Rebbe does said before, in yesterday's Tanya, as Alter Rebbe said, this, when a person does that, he's worth that he's worse than the challenge itself. He's worse than the, than the evil aspect itself. Mamish, because the evil aspect, is there, as he said, he said, is there for the challenge. I chose to, to take on the challenge. I chose to thought, think about it. I chose to talk about it. I chose to do it. So I'm worse than the thing that has no choice. I had the choice. I chose to be stupid. I don't have to be stupid. 
I chose to do this moment of insanity. I cannot say, okay, once I'm insane, I'm insane. But I chose to be insane. Unless you are, you didn't have that choice. But I chose to do that. And they're more than all the things that this world that derive from them. Shame behemis, he's worse. Think about it, Dr. Rebbe says. He's worse, he's worse than, a, than, a, than a, an incosher animal. Because again, the incosher animal had no choice. The pig was born a pig. The horse was born a horse. It's a beautiful animal. God made him a horse. It's taka la kosher. It's impure in Torah law. Still, God's creation. Because God wanted it. He had no choice. If he had a choice, he maybe would have been a cow. But he didn't have the choice. We have the choice to be human. We have the choice to be godly. And we choose not to do that. We choose to be something that's not what we are really. So then we're worse than the cow. I mean, worse than the, then, I don't want to say the worse than the pig. Worse than the, than the horse. Or the cat. Or the dog. Whatever you like. And even vermin and reptiles. Kamaima as the sages tell us. Yitush Kadma. The Abish that created a human being. The Gemara says the Abish that created God created a human being, the last of all creation. Why would God create the last of all creation? Everything was created first. Even a gnat was created before a human being. Why? The Gemara says, because a human being can either be the priority, because that was the thought of man was in the beginning of all creation. But ultimately, since God gave a human being free choice, he can be the lowest of all creation. He can be lower than a gnat. Pirush, the af yitush. Yitush is like a gnat, like a mosquito. A mosquito in, in, in Chassidus is symbolic of something that is totally clippus, totally evil. Why? Because a mosquito takes and doesn't give, give out. A yitush takes, doesn't give out. That is the lowest of everything. Everything else in the world, God created and takes and it gives. A yitush only takes. It gives you malaria. But it doesn't, doesn't, doesn't give out anything from its body. It takes machnes ve'ena moitzi. That's klippa. Machnes ve'ena moitzi. Klippa takes. It's there for the taking. It's not there for the giving. It's there for the taking. That's the concept of Ra in general. There for the taking. The challenge is there to get you in. To pull me in. That is, that's a, it's not going to give me anything good out of it. It's only going to give me ultimately headaches and sodas now and for forever. Tamachnes ve'ena moitzi. Kedusha is the opposite. It takes and now you become a giver. You become, it, it gives, takes and gives. Clippers, depends how deep it is, ultimately only takes. In the example of the Alter Rebbe, of, of the Torah over here of infidelity, is totally a destructive thing. It takes, it's destructive. Chasa Shalom, infidelity comes into a family, it's going to be so, and we know that, it's so destructive. Destructive to the person himself, destructive to his family, his kids, it's destructive. That's the example of, 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 of that's the Torah example of a yitush, something that takes, oh, we're into the moment, the passion, the moment of gratification. Oh, yeah, it is. It's a machnes. No moitzi. Nothing good's going to come out of this. Not for, the, not, for, not for the man, not for the woman, not for his family, for nobody. Everything's going to be destroyed. And that's what happens. That's the analogy of Clippus. She klippa yesa tachtena, which is the very lowest form of klippa, is so far removed from holiness. With kratis, with amashpia v'taz arichuk, which even is so far from it, from the holiness implies humility, which leads to kindness and to benevolence, while klippa represents egocentric and selflessness, 
Now, even the very lowest clip is symbolized by a gnat takes precedence over the sinner in order to descend to the divine life force and divine will. Because he, me, I take God's purpose, God's light, God's energy, God's essence, has for shalom, and I bring it into a very low place. And so too, this what's the, 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 the shadow box. This means that the clip is symbolized by a gnat derives its life first from a higher level of godliness than that from which the sinner sustains. Because it was created by God against his choice. Me, I load myself to a place where I shouldn't have done that with, with my own free choice. Surely the other unclean creatures are, that even for ferocious beasts are higher than the sinner. Here the Alter Rebbe, I mean, telling us this is like the Musr in, in, in Tanya. Alter Rebbe is trying to express to us the negative of sin. Not that, that you're going to get Gehenim, you're going to be punished. Oh, right now, right now, you have clothe yourself into a into a situation which is totally opposite of who you are, of who I am. I'm bringing myself into a situation that's not me. Not only it's not me, it's the opposite of who I am. That's the biggest punishment that you can have. That you become now the lowest person in the world. The lowest entity, I don't know the lowest person, the lowest entity in the world, lower than even an animal in this moment. Why Shakula Aida Mashan Tafkidam? This gnat and this this all these animals never changed their purpose. They just created them in a certain purpose, and that's what they do. And they and and their intended purpose, they obey God's command to be an animal, to be a, 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 a pig, to be a, a a cockroach, to be. They are following God's command. As it says, yet the, the spirit receives it that it says the fear and dread shall be lie upon every beast of the earth. This is always I say this. It happens to me many times. When you're walking in the street, a dog barks at you, you think about it. You should think about it when a dog barks at you when, you, when, when you're walking down the street. Because it says, the Torah says, the fear and dread of you shall be upon the lie of the beast of the earth. And if a dog looks at you and barks, the dog might be looking at you and saying, wait a second, who are you? Since I was created to fear a human being, and now I have no fear from you, I'm barking at you. Maybe the dog is looking at me that I'm not a human being. He sees my sins. He sees that I shouldn't be a human being. I maybe should be lower than a dog. As our sage explained, a wild beast will never defy a human being unless he appears to it like an animal. And if the animal, if the animal, the dog looks at me, as an animal, it knows something that I really know. But the righteous, who the face of the divine image never departs, call the evil beasts are humble before them. And the basic example is Gabi Daniel We think we always talk about Daniel in the pit of lions. Everyone knows that story. The great miracle. After that, it says, the Zohar says that wasn't a great miracle. Daniel was a tzaddik. And if Daniel was a tzaddik, the lions could not touch him. Because the Torah says, the fear of the lion, of the animals will be upon you. So the second Daniel was put into the pit, the lions were basically humbled before him. They came. Thus it is clear. One who sins and transgresses against God's will, even a minor offense, 
is at the time he commits it completely removed from the divine hole. He looks like a gnat. He looks like worse than a gnat. He looks like worse than an animal. Meaning God's unity. And when that's what a person has to look at a This is the way Chassidus wanted a Jew should look at a veil. Not about the punishment, but the way he looks at the present time. The stupidity that he's doing at this present time. He should look in the mirror and say, look what I look like. I'm disconnected from my purpose. I'm disconnected from who I really am. I'm looking bad. He looks at this present time worse than animals. Unclean animals, self-understood. Reptiles, cockroaches. That they derive their sustenance from the Sitra Achel Clippers, Rabbi De Zara, and Rabbi De Zara. Okay, that completes the Tanya, beautiful Tanya of the day. The way the Alter Rebbe wanted everybody should look at a sin. That's a, I think the Alter Rebbe is very dramatic because he tries to put it into real context that we should look at a, at a cockroach and feel when I, before I do the sin, why do I want to look? If a cockroach disgusts me for whatever reason, what if the cockroach why, why, why would a cockroach disgust me if it's a creation by God? But if it does, wow, how this Aveda should disgust me. Imagine if we whatever disgusted by you, right? We have the concept of uh, you know, you have a beautiful meal in front of you, beautiful steak, and if a cockroach walks right in front of it for whatever reason, you're suddenly you're not gonna eat the meal. You become, it's come, you become, get nauseated. Imagine if you felt, if I felt the same way every time I wanted to think something bad, every time I wanted a chashidon, I would feel like, I, like, ugh, it's disgusting to me. But that's what it is. It really is disgusting. Just like the cockroach is disgusting to you, even though God created that cockroach. So too, this Aveira, this sin, should feel the same way because it's going against, I'm choosing something that's going against who I really am. It really should be. We are holding on the 15th day of the month, Tu B'Shvat, 15th day of the month, the Tillam of the day, starts from chapter 77, 78, 70, 77, and 78. 77 and 78, and you would have done your uh, chitas of the day. I wish you a wonderful day of the celebration, the New Year's for trees. May we all be blessed with a happy, healthy year and a uh, healthy year of vegetation and fruits and delight. As uh, as uh, the Rebbe said, the Rebbe said that uh, the, we, that trees is not only the trees, the seven things that were blessed in their soul, but it's exactly all trees that God should bless, which brings us the light and life. That God should bless us that we should have a year of delight and a year of joy and a year of happiness as the, as fruits bring to our lives. And especially fruits are very healthy. God should bring us a year of health. God bless you all. I'll see you tomorrow, Mitchem, at 8 a.m. as we continue the chitas of the day.